What's up, YouTube? First and foremost, shout out to Alien Army. That's everybody who subscribes and follows with me and hits the like button and drops some comments. Really easy to subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing, especially if you like my content. Really easy to drop a comment because if you don't know what to put as a comment, put an alien, put a mothership, put a high, put a wave, put a thumbs up. I do respond to 99.9% .9 of my comments. So if you got a question or anything like that, question, comment, concern, statement, you know, rock with me. Um, I'm going to jump in straight into this video. This is a uh, homeless hard knock life. It's basically going to be an update, but I'm going to go into uh, things a little bit deeper from the, the video before this, which I believe, I, I can't think of the name, uh, that, what I named it as the title, but it was a lot of updates that was going on. Um, There's some stuff that I missed from there, and then some stuff I want to add into this, but it's all going to be on uh, the same uh, same stuff, so homeless hard knock life. By the way, uh, just to let you know, um, uh, you know, I understand if you guys watch a video that you like, always hit a thumbs up. However, when there's really big YouTubers and you put a comment like, let's say it was a question or congratulations or you know uh, a statement 99.9% uh, 99, uh, 99.9% of the people do not even respond to that stuff it's really cool to rock with a smaller channel and actually you know like your comments do get answered your comments do get thumbs up do you know what I mean your, your comments do get hearts you know all this stuff um, you know uh, there's a lot of people that actually give me ideas to do videos just from their comments you know what I'm saying by the way if you don't know uh, I am homeless I do live in my car I've been living in my car for quite some time if you want to know the full story it's real quick and easy I have a full video Video on there, I think it's called Homeless Full Story. I got a lot of videos on, on here. Uh, <clears throat> as of right now, I'm posting about every other day, but there's been times where I was posted every single day. So I got a lot of content. If you like this or you're unsure about stuff, watch some of my other stuff and then subscribe and then rock with me uh, real quick as well. Um, I'm not begging or anything like that, but my Cash App is the same as my YouTube name, Alien Ascend. Same as my YouTube. I'll leave it uh, in the description. But yeah, Alien Ascend, uh, same as YouTube. So jumping into this homeless, hard knock life. So, <clears throat> some of the stuff that I missed um, on the last video, and I actually took notes on this, is uh, last month when, uh, when I was talking about, you know, like why I hadn't uh, posted a video for a while, what's been going on, one of the things I actually forgot to go ahead and mention is I am officially on welfare now. Um, it does not, you know, uh, I'm not happy about it, you know. So, like, I'm going to give you updates. I'm going to tell you how I feel about it as well. Like, uh, however, you know, the last couple of weeks, I uh, haven't been making very much money doing DoorDash or Uber Eats. Uh, that's probably an understatement. It's been costing me more, uh, more than that. There's been a lot of uh, nights that were under 30 degrees where I'm really, really cold in my car, running the gas, not getting orders very much. In fact, uh, just a, a quick update. Yesterday, I actually went into a door, uh, door dasher at a gas station and uh, somebody who I know, and she's like, hey, I got actually a job interview tomorrow. And I said, oh, that's cool. I said, uh, I said if they uh, offer you the job, are you going to take it? And she's like, yeah, of course, it's $20 an hour. I said, oh, okay. She's like, she's like, I'm not getting any orders out in it right now, man. This is an oversaturated market. They hired a new draw, you know, like, like basically let a bunch of people come in. And with DoorDash, to give you an idea, like, I understand that some people might actually have some knowledge about this. You got to schedule your stuff, right? If you don't schedule it, what you can easily do is go to a hot zone, turn it on, and then go into the zone that you want to work in. I, uh, I know historically, if you look at this stuff, I know that I stay, you know, I've stayed at truck stops that are in the hood for a very long period of time. I'm not really in the hood now. I'm, I'm about 20 miles away from, from where I used to, to, to stay at and stuff. And uh, I talked about uh, why I'm not in that area any, anymore. It's not like uh, I get ran off. I'll stay wherever the hell I want. I could care less. Uh, however, you know, I, I'm sleeping better and I know it costs me a little bit more to drive, you know, a little bit further out. However, I've always worked in, um, you know, medium to, to rich type areas. So there's, there's quite a few different zones. Uh, that scheduling thing does suck unless you have over 70%, um, you know, uh, I think it's 70% acceptance rate. That's very easy. There is a glitch on DoorDash to get that without even taking any orders. I've seen people go ahead and take all the crap orders just to get 70%, and then they find out, like, you know, the only, the only advantage, in my opinion, is, is that you can turn on the app uh, any time. You don't have to schedule it. Uh, but there's a glitch for that. Uh, so uh, if you don't have that glitch, you can go into a hot zone, turn turn the app on, and then run into whatever zones you want. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it, even if you get timed out, it, it still doesn't count. At least it doesn't count towards me and uh, some people that I know. But uh, jumping straight into this, right? Because I do want everybody to watch this stuff. I don't want to be long-winded about one subject and then people actually, you know, like, you know, uh, ask questions that this video has, you know, towards the end. Like, my last video was like 45 minutes or 43 minutes. Uh, I had a couple comments. If people actually watched the full video, they would have got it. And so I guess I need to make a better job of, uh, you know, putting the information out quickly, I guess. Even though YouTube is known for long-form content, this is why I actually post on YouTube and not on Instagram and not on uh, TikTok. 
you know, like, I like YouTube the best, you know what I mean? So, uh, so, uh, went ahead and got on welfare, which is DSS. I was hungry. It took a while. Uh, you had to basically fill, fill out information and take some pictures of some stuff and put it on, uh, you know, send it to them. And then within a couple of days, they mail you uh, a card, whether you qualify for or not. And then uh, they say that, you know, call or, you know, they're going to call you for an interview. That's basically a process. Um, I got it last month. And when I got it last month, I got a partial. So it was towards the end of the, the month of last month. So I got a partial. <clears throat> and then they said, moving forward, you're going to go ahead and, and, and get it. And uh, they, they do it, you know, I think between three months, six months, and a year. And then you got to do a reevaluation. You know what I mean? And basically, they just want to know that if you're a U.S. citizen, how much money you do make, how much money you have in the banks, and the way that you you know you don't just tell them that stuff. You've got to go ahead and log in, and take screenshots of it, and you uh, or uh, paper bills. And they do want to make sure that you know, but they're not they're not being accusatory. The, the process is pretty straightforward, other than being on the phone and being on hold for a long time and that kind of crap, which sucks. But no, the people that I've talked to and, and I dealt with it was, was halfway decent, well, more than halfway decent, right? <clears throat> uh, next thing as well is uh, I've been worried about my phone and uh, I've not got to start paying my phone bill. I've been doing partial payments for quite some time. I talked about my, one of my friends named Roughing It who got himself a 10-inch tablet and a phone, unlimited data on the, the, the tablet. And uh, a bunch of good stuff. Like his phone was nice, man. Like it was a really nice uh, high-end Android. I think it was a Galaxy something. And then uh, I didn't. He told me about the the 10-inch um, uh, freaking tablet. I don't. If he showed it to me, it was briefly. I I really don't remember. But nonetheless, he got both those for free. I limited, you know, I, I limited everything on the, on the tablet. He had some limitations on the cell phone, but they were still like it was still high up. So I went ahead and actually applied for something like that <clears throat> because uh, what I what I found out is is uh, it's, I think it's called SNAP instead of Welfare or DSS or whatever. If you're on D, uh, DSS or SNAP or Welfare or something along those lines, you qualify for a free phone most likely. However, the the program that actually does that is a program called ACP. The ACP, as far as I understand, that is is um, you know, it's it's on hold right now. Like they're not taking new members, so you can't get into it. For years, you can go in there, and I think it's called the uh, the accredited um, uh, uh, cell phone program or something like that. ACP. You know, don't quote me on that. <clears throat> and then the other one is called LifeLock. And with uh, LifeLock. It's uh, they're willing to reduce a bill, and on some services you could get a free phone, but most of the time, like I, I could have got a really nice Galaxy phone. However, I would have had to pay for the SIM card, and then um, I had some unlimited stuff, and then for ten dollars extra a month, I could have got a ten-inch tablet. However, because I didn't qualify for ACP, I only qualified for LifeLock. It still would have cost me, uh, you know, uh, over a hundred dollars for that stuff. So I went through all the services from the government website, finding, you know, you know what's not going to cost me anything or something that it would would be very cheap. And uh, they give me a, I did get a phone. It's got a bunch of different restrictions on it. I'm trying to look for it right now. I actually just plugged it into the charger. Oh, man, where the hell did I put it? Uh, hold on. Here it is. I'm not going to turn it on because it'll show my information. But it's a, it's a Kubi phone. K-O-O-B-E-E. -E. Uh, hopefully that doesn't mean that somebody could go ahead and find me or whatever, but it's a it's a it's a Kubi phone. Uh, yeah, it's got limitations. It was free. It was sent to me. Uh, you know, didn't have to pay for anything. It's got a lot of restrictions. So do I get unlimited data? No. Do I get unlimited talk? No. But it is an emergency phone. As long as I use this thing a couple times a month and use the services and stuff like that, they're not going to shut it off on me. If they do shut it off on me, I'm going to have to reapply with LifeLock and then get reactivated and whatnot, right? Uh, it is a slow phone. Uh, the, you know, I was thinking when I applied for it that, like, you know, like, we was going down the list. Like, what if I got something that would had a halfway decent camera like the phone that I have now? And then I could actually take you guys on doing door dashes and, like, because I could have one phone, you know, using, um, you know, uh, Google Maps and using the apps like DoorDashes, uh, DoorDash and Uber Eats. And the other one could be recording me and I could go ahead and just, when it, when it told me, you know, like, what location I was at or if I showed things on the screen that showed somebody's address, I could block it out. So you guys wouldn't get that information. But I could 
could show you guys uh, a day in the life where I'm actually trying to make a, a couple of dollars. You know what I mean? Uh, however, that that camera, no way. I don't even think it's 480p. It's uh, it's bad. Like even in the most perfect lighting, it is so grainy and pixelated. So, uh, however, I'm still very thankful uh, of having uh, this phone because if something ever happens where I can't pay this phone bill, I could at least use this for emergency phone calls, emergency text, and things like that. So it, it you know it, it's free. It didn't cost me anything other than uh, you know fooling something out a little bit of time. Uh, I'm thankful. So that was another thing. Uh, just to let you know, I am very embarrassed. Um, to admit that you know I did go on DSS, you know welfare. I am embarrassed that I actually went out to get a phone. Um, if you guys, you know, like this is the first time you watching one of my videos. I know that I'm not maybe showing it on my face. Like I'm not going to sit on camera and cry. I'm not going to punch holes in my car. I'm not going to throw a fit and tell you just how bad it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that negativity to myself and try to find a positive with it. And if things are get so negative, I just don't post for a couple of weeks. And that's only happened once. I, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm coming off of that. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm very thankful uh, for the the phone and the DSS card. Um, one of the embarrassing things with that is, is I went ahead and bought an energy drink um, yesterday at a gas station and uh, my card got declined and they're like oh, oh oh we're supposed to say that it's food so evidently if at gas stations or I guess at registers they it shows them that you're using a welfare card and uh, I kind of wish that it didn't uh, just to give you some uh, some info and some intel on it, uh, you can't buy hot food. I can't go into a grocery store and buy razors, soap, toothpaste, uh, you know, uh, body wash. Can't buy anything like that. It uh, it has to be cold food. Uh, cold food, excuse me. So let's say, for example, uh, you know, you walked into a place that that sold hot pizza. If I got that, it would be declined right at the register, no matter what. And that's because I guess it had the label on there says it's hot food and it goes against the card because they don't want you buying hot food. They want you to buy stuff and they know that I'm actually homeless and living in my car. Uh, the address that I was able to go ahead and use for that stuff, um, they, I, they know it's my friend. So they have it as a uh, as a temporary mailing address only, not a, not a residence. So it doesn't help stuff. Uh, but you know what? I am thankful. It's really hard for you to go to sleep when you're hungry. Um, it's a lot harder than, uh, you know, sucking up your pride and doing this. And if you're homeless and you are on the fence, I mean, I, I just barely got this and I've been homeless for quite some time now. Um, you know, you, you need to do what you need to do. If you're comfortable with it, then, then do it. Uh, it's not like I was comfortable, like, oh, I can't wait till I get it. This is going to be, you know, the most, you know, best thing. It's like, wait a minute, I'm out of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of food. I'm not making any money. I am going hungry. Uh, you know, the, the pantries aren't giving, you know, they're, they're not giving me uh, anything. I mean, I, I I understand they're giving me donuts. Uh, it's, it's just going to make me overweight and feel like my body doesn't have any nutrition. Uh, can I get something where I go into the store and maybe buy some stuff? Uh, one of the good things about that is that sometimes there's um, the rotisserie chickens that are cold. Buying that, yeah, cold chicken's not the best tasting, but it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's food. So I'm not going on a big list, but there's a lot I want to talk about. Uh, and uh, I feel like I'm trying to go fast so that people don't just stop watching at the seventh and eighth minute mark. That everybody watches this because I got a lot to talk about. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. Uh, next thing is, is uh, my insurance is uh, officially lapsed by tomorrow. So if I don't pick up insurance tomorrow at some, uh, some way, somehow, uh, no insurance. My insurance uh, company called me today and told me if I didn't pay by three, uh, it would be lapsed by tomorrow because I wouldn't be able to make a payment in time. So that means that before I leave where I'm at tomorrow, I probably should um, at least get liability insurance. I don't have the money for it, just to let you know. Um, maybe something will happen, who knows? Maybe I drive with bad insurance or maybe this is entertainment purposes only, but uh, you know, I don't wanna get in trouble for it, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I'll be flat out and honest. Uh, tomorrow, no insurance unless I make some calls and uh, I get lucky with some liability where maybe they won't charge me right tomorrow and then I get uh, liability. I know for um, uh, Google, um, Google, excuse me, um, DoorDash and Uber Eats, they require for you to have full coverage. That's what I've been having this whole time. Uh, is it in the rule if I rock with liability and don't let them know and then uh, in a week or two I get full full coverage if I can, if I can afford it I don't care it's not breaking the law it's 
you're not supposed to be driving a car with that insurance, but I'm still going to be held li you know, liable uh, if somebody hits me or I hit them. And I'm not really too worried about me hitting anybody. I'm very worried of people hitting me. However, anybody who's been following me knows that I'm a, I, I have a Class A license. I have no speeding tickets, never been in any accidents. I'm a very, very, very good driver. Uh, but <laughs> I can still get pulled over. I can still get a ticket, right? You never know, right? So am I stressed out about that? Absolutely. Uh, I think this will be, uh, it's been a very long, long, long time since I've not been able to pay for my own insurance. And uh, it's disheartening. Um, let's see here. Next thing is uh, okay. <clears throat> My tags and registration are up in June. <clears throat> um, I'm rocking a two year tag, two years reg uh, registration, two years license plate type thing, right? So it's I'm going on the second year. I do have two years of property taxes that I have to pay. I can only imagine that'd be a couple thousand dollars that I don't have at the very least, probably a thousand dollars, but. That's uh, something that I need to do before June, or my car is, uh, you know, not street legal. I mean, it, it might not be street legal tomorrow because I might not have insurance, and uh, I'm embarrassed and ashamed, and I, uh, I'm paranoid to say that because if I, <laughs> if for some reason I get a ticket and they, they found this uh, YouTube, like, wait a minute, you, you can't tell me you didn't know you didn't have insurance. You talked about it, you know, the day before I pulled you over, you know, and to be like that sometimes, right? So I'm just trying to be careful, but I'm being honest at the same time. Um, uh, the other thing is, is uh, uh, you know, me having, um, you know, my registration and my tags being up in uh, in June, is um, you have to have a safety, uh, was a safety inspection. I assume that'd be about a hundred dollars. I think that depending on the place, I may not be able to pass because I do have a cracked windshield. That cracks not all the way through. Um, my whole thing so it is not blocking my view so as far as i'm concerned uh it's legal and i've been on the freeway millions of times i've gone uh you know state to state uh before with my, my windshield like this it was hail damage i have hail damage to my roof and uh, uh my hood and uh the hell is what broke my windshield this last time um nonetheless uh they may or may not uh let me pass the safety inspection because of that it's not all the way through it's, about, uh, I don't know, probably about 30 to 40 percent, but it's up high and moves around. It's kind of hard. You can see exactly where the hell hit, but the other stuff is cracks that are very thin, but it's not blocking my, my full uh, full view. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think that's okay. However, uh, if I was to replace that, that's $300. I still have $1,400 in my car. My car um, has gone to collections because it's been uh, so long since I made a payment. I've uh, talked to them on the phone, and uh, they told me I'm on the repo list. So that's another thing as well. They uh, it's fourteen hundred dollars is what I owe my car. I believe four hundred dollars is late payments, and that they would be willing to settle between nine hundred fifty and a thousand dollars. I don't have that. If you're watching my videos, uh, I don't have that at all. I have uh, less than twenty dollars to my name right now, and I will not get paid till next week. And right now, it's going to be it's looking like a very small paycheck. For doing, um, you know, DoorDash and Reads. If I cashed in my stuff at a certain point, it just means that I pay more. So let's say if you made twenty-five, like let's say that um, Uber Eats, you can cash out once you make twenty-five dollars, but they take five dollars. Well, that's I, I I need that five bucks. I'm better off waiting for them to do a direct deposit. If you understand what I'm saying, right? So um, uh, I own my vehicle, and I'm wondering is that going to be an issue when I get registration again? You know, like, are they going to say, wait a minute, we can't, you know, we, you know, I'm glad that you paid your property tax. I'm glad that you paid for your registration. I'm glad that you paid for your, um, you know, your uh, safety inspection. However, we can't go ahead and register your vehicle because you have a lien against it. And who's to say that they don't try to take my vehicle or something like that. I don't, I'm not, I'm not from here. I've been out here in the Midwest for three years now. Um, I don't know all the loopholes and stuff like that. They very well could. And anybody you know if you watched my last video i'm paranoid about that stuff like you know i have a, a separation anxiety uh, out of my vehicle before i even found out it was on the repo list you know so do i sell my car if i can't get it all legal i know i brought that up uh in the video before um this video of course uh for you know might sell my car if i if i'm unable to get uh you know registration tags uh paid by property taxes and all that kind of stuff then i'm a sitting duck like you know i if i got my car if i got my car towed right now i couldn't get it out no matter what 
you know, uh, if my car was not legal in June when when all this stuff is due, and I should probably have it done, you know, if, I, if I'm smart and I'm educated, I should have it done at least two, three weeks before that. So, like, you know, that, uh, you know, I get everything in order. I can put the tags on. I can put the, you know, title and all that kind of crap. Um, but if, uh, if I'm able to do that kind of stuff, then it's just a matter of time before I get pulled over and I get my car took. So do I sell it? Do I go live on the streets? And this is the hard knock life part. So, you know, like what I was talking about is, is you know, homeless hard knock life. So my little notepad here. I'll talk to you guys uh, <clears throat> live and direct without, you know, looking at my notes so much. So homeless in the hard knock life. So if I'm unable to have a legal vehicle that I live in and that I use, you know, like to go ahead and get groceries and that I use to make money doing DoorDash and Uber Eats and any gig apps that are willing to pay. But on top of which, if you're a new viewer, I do pop into uh, places like Lowe's and Home Depot and I try to do like, you know, like I see somebody buying a bunch of stuff <clears throat> and they're, they're talking amongst themselves. Like, let's say that's like a, like a man and a woman and they're talking like, hey, yeah, we could do some tile. Oh, I saw a YouTube video that it's a DIY, this, you know, linoleum uh, tile is really easy to put in. If I hear conversations like that going on, and I got videos of me actually uh, not approaching these people, but doing work at their house and uh, telling them, you know, I'll work, uh, I'll, you know, I'll be a helper, man. If you have a concrete job and you need somebody to pick up, you know, 80 bags that weigh probably about 80 pounds each, put them in your, your truck and then follow you. To where you're going to go lay this concrete and be a helper even though i have no concrete really experience but can i lift stuff yeah of course right lift all this stuff or let's say you got a drywall job and you're doing some painting around your house or let you know if i hear that you have a diy project but it sounds like you could use a helper and a second mind would help that stuff i i let them know you know flat out like hey i probably could help you uh you know, I'm not a contractor. Let me show you that I have my Class A license, which means that, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I used to truck drive. So, this, you know, for some watching this, there's a lot of trust that goes into the license. It means that I, I'm checked out, especially when I tell you that I, you know, I came from an accredited school. I did it for about two, you know, over two years. I have over two years of experience. You know, uh, I'm on the up and up. I'm homeless right now. I just, you know, I was living paycheck to paycheck and couldn't afford it. And that's what this this whole, um, you know, the Hard Knocks Life type video is coming into. Is is I'm having a hard time paying for my vehicle that I live in. I had to leave my apartment when I couldn't do that. <clears throat> uh, if I if I got out of my vehicle right now in the location that I'm at, I would I would totally be screwed. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in the Midwest. In the beginning months of April, I mean, we're we're still in hurricane season, like hurricane season, uh, you know, tornado season, whatever it's called. I think it's tornado. Uh, t the tornado season is going to go on for, for for several months. The rain is extremely violent and very unpredictable. Um, probably should stop moving my hands because I see at the bottom of the screen something like this. Very animated. I I do talk with my hands. However, when I'm talking to somebody, I don't put my hands on somebody. I you know. Uh, it's just something I do on, I guess it's maybe a nervous tick on YouTube. I have no idea, but nonetheless. So like, do I sell my car and get some equity out of it? Uh, you know, do I go ahead and then, uh, go out West? Like I was homeless before without a vehicle. Uh, probably been about over 20 years. If I had to guess over 20 years ago, I was homeless without a vehicle. Uh, and uh, I slept in parks, I slept behind tennis ball courts, I slept in little um, ditches uh, that were off to, uh, like off on the side of an apartment complex. Um, I slept behind dumpsters, behind stores. Uh, I did do recycling. This is on the West Coast. I don't even, I, I don't, I don't even know if the Midwest recycles. That's that, that's how little I know about here. I, I know that you, you know, in the trash cans and the dumpsters, they say to throw that stuff in a certain little spot or whatever. But I have no idea. <clears throat> so, um, you know, that's basically a lot of the stuff that's you know going through my mind. Do I sell my car a week or two before my tags are done? Is something going to change? Am I going to get some progress? You know, it's hard knocks life. You know, am I uh, an entrepreneur and a hustler and somebody who grinds? I like to think so, but then at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that I'm going through, and I don't want this to be a video where it's like, oh, poor, poor, poor alien. He can't do nothing right, you know, or alien. He's always failing. Like, you know, I, I don't like this stuff. And I, that's 
the video before this was asked, you know, to talk about your genuine um, feelings along with the updates that are going on. So if I said, hey, I got an interview, but I got told no, okay, that would be, you know, very uh, cut and dry. But I really do feel as though that uh, the, the alien army member wants me to go into the feelings that I felt why that was going on. And I think more of the, you know, other people are interested in that as well. So I'm just saying, I do gotta grab my nose because I gotta look something up. Yeah. Sadness and anger, disappointment, um, feeling that failure, feeling like I don't belong. Uh, the way that I actually operate is, uh, I get, I'm very sensitive. Like, whatever you, if you, if you called me a bad word on YouTube, does it mean because I'm sensitive it's gonna hurt? No. It, it doesn't work like that with me. Um, I'm sensitive in a different way. I'm very sensitive and very shy. What, you know, like, when I show people, or I tell people, you know, I know in real life that are my friends, and they actually watch my YouTube channel, they actually subscribe, and I don't know what their names are. You know, I, that's something I, 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 like, they go, hey, I'm the one who, who put this comment. I don't want to know who you are. Like, you know, keep that a mystery to me. But nonetheless, um, with, uh, with that being said, uh, everybody that I meet, they have no idea that I'm shy. They have no idea that I'm actually very sensitive. They have no idea that, um, you know, like, that, uh, that I think so much. And that's the real hard knocks life of it. You know, like, you know, I turn my sadness into anger and I've done that my whole life. And I wish that people, if they felt that way, they could drop it in the comment section and let me know. Pull my window up a little bit. I keep hearing trucks behind me, <clears throat> or uh, not very far in the distance. Um, I turn my sadness into anger, and then I use the anger to empower me into doing something really good. So I take a, a uh, I take a negative force and turn it into a positive. If I was just taking negative stuff and then acting out on it, I probably wouldn't be on YouTube. I'd probably be doing life somewhere. You know what I mean? I'm not like that, you know, um, uh, I value my freedom, you know, uh, oh, that's the word, that's the word I was looking for, so my whole life I've had an impulse control issue, right, so as a kid, I didn't know uh, what the consequences were, I, it didn't matter, I, I was on impulse control, so like, I was really, really shy, so, you know, if I made other people feel awkward or they didn't feel like when I was a kid they wanted to play with me or, like, you know, go play at hide and go seek or whatever, um, you know, it is what it is, right? Then I learned that, wait a minute, you know, if you're somebody who, you know, drags a, drags a group down, like a friend group or whatever, if you're always somebody there complaining, like, I didn't make enough money or, you know, my kids are hellions and blah, 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 People don't want you around when, when you're like that. So I learned from an early age to like hold that stuff in and then be be the happy dude. Or like, you know, when I'm hanging out with all my friends, like I'm one of the the, the, the class clowns. I'm somebody, you know, I'm alien, man. Like, you know, uh, yeah, you want me to wash your dishes real quick and, and help you uh, roast these potatoes? Oh, oh, I love that song. Let me tell you about the last album. Let me tell you about this. Like all energy and like, you know, very punctual and stuff like that. However, when I'm, when I'm by myself and I'm living in a car and I'm not around, you know, support systems and people that I hang out with and things like that, what, what, what do you think I'm doing in here? And I want to be 100% genuine and 100% transparent. I'm in here thinking that I'm not worth nothing. I'm, I'm in here thinking I'm a failure. I'm, I'm in here thinking, you know what, uh, I would. Why, why do some people, you know, and I tried, I do my best not to compare myself to anybody but myself, but when I go ahead and see, like, you know what, man, that person's really ignorant, but they, they got really far, you know, like, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll throw some, I'll throw some, uh, you know, knowledge you can't get in college on it is like, you know, is P. Diddy a better person than me? Is P. Diddy, uh, you know, smarter than me? Is P. Diddy, uh, P. Diddy more determined than me? Is he a better artist than me? Is he a better person than me? You know, would he jump in the ring to fight Mike Tyson if that meant that it ended up homeless? You know, ended uh, ended all homelessness in America. You know, you know, is he somebody that puts the words and the determination, and the integrity behind it, and the respect, and actually stand up for something? No. And I mean, I know that everything that's going on with him is all allegedly, but this is, and I and I, I don't compare, 
I do my best not to compare uh, myself to other people. However, in this uh, in this demonstration, I'm using an analogy, and everything I'm saying is allegedly towards him. I'm using an analogy, you know, showing that, that like, uh, I want to finish the statement, so I'm going to jump into another one, so I'm not sounding so sporadic. Um, he, in my opinion, is uh, is nothing like me. I don't like any of the stuff that he's being alleged with. It's been going on for years. People have, you know, uh, allegedly have been saying things about him for years and everything else. And with all that being said, uh, you know, like, why does he get a break? You know, why is he worth eight hundred million and I'm worth uh, eight pennies? I know that I saw a video with Takashi Six Nine. He's like, you know, I know that there's better rappers. And this is my second point. Takashi Six Nine. I know there's better rappers. He's like, I know people that would bury my verses and make a hotter song than me, and they are more out there. And they're like this. But are you willing to do everything that you're being told to go do? Are you willing to go ahead and come to this radio station at two and then leave here at three and give the responses that you're being told to and fed to? At least that was the gist of uh, of what I got from him saying that. And then that tells me that you know what. That means that uh, you're paid for, man. You can't speak your opinion on everything. You have to. You have a public relations person for a reason. You know what to say and what not to say, and what to do and what not to do. Even though a lot of the stuff is all controversial, you know, controversial. You know, uh, he's got statements where he's like, you know, in a song, you know, I am, you know, everybody's trying to chase cloud. I am cloud. Maybe because I, uh, uh, you know, I don't put myself out there and and, and do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, probably yeah, I probably shouldn't even be talking about it. You know, but at the same time, I will say that you know that there are better rappers than Takashi Six Nine that make better, hotter songs, and that nobody knows about, and that nobody will ever know. Why is that person's talent going unnoticed, but Takashi is? It, uh, you know, Takashi's is. Maybe that's a bigger answer. Why is P Diddy's? Uh, you know, him not, in my opinion, not having. Uh, uh, very much talent at all. Maybe he's maybe maybe he does. Uh, everybody has their own opinion. Why is he so successful, and uh, other people are not? You know, now there are people out there that are successful that actually do show talent and stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that are actually you know, <clears throat> you know, extremely famous, uh, and I feel as though they don't get enough appreciation. But I'm probably being sidetracked as usual. Uh, nonetheless. I've always had, um, you know, like, I guess, you know, talking about the genuine feelings. I feel alone when I'm really, really sad. I feel angry. I feel like I have impulse control. I've always had an impulse control. Um, for a very long time, I've been able, I'm talking about, like, since I was, like, you know, maybe, like, 16, 18 years old, I've been able to tame my, uh, my impulse control. Um, when somebody disrespects me, I don't take flight on them. Uh, you know, I keep my hands to myself unless I'm defending myself. I believe a lot of things can be solved with words other than actions. I'm not some big old tough guy who's pressing up on people just because I have something over on them. I'm not like that at all. I'm very humble, very nice, um, very sensitive, very sweet, very thoughtful. <clears throat> More than me just telling you who I am, you know. Uh, you know, I have a very big heart, and at the same time, um, my heart, uh, you know, gets hurt a lot you know that's that's one of the side effects and I, I remember seeing a video they're like you know when you're a man and you're in trouble who do you call you know who do I call you know and the biggest thing about me and and, and, and maybe this is where you guys can help me out the most maybe that's where I'm, I'm going with my quote unquote rhetoric I can't let go of things and I know the people are like oh don't use the word can't there's so much stuff that I hold inside that I can't let go or I don't know how to let go and I would love to know the answer. And I know that the answer is not therapy. The answer is not um, prescriptions. I wouldn't take that stuff anyways. You know, I don't know what the answer is for letting that go. I know that there are some people that just jump, in, you know, jump into a commercial vehicle. And ignorance must be bliss. They jump in that. They have no um, navigation system. They think they could go ahead and find the locations just using Google Maps. They have no idea about how you're supposed to run your clock. They have no idea the proper way of even going in and out of the vehicle because they got their CDL from a soda company. And they, it, they're, they're, it's a commercial vehicle, but it's a lot different than having something with a fifth wheel and it's a 53-foot uh, trailer. 
I have no idea how these people jump into things without knowing what to expect or having a better idea of what to expect. And, you know, like, they never heard that, you know, you're not supposed to go underneath the bridge that's, you know, 13-6. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I see this stuff all the, uh, all the time. And, uh, you know, I hope the best for them. I hope that they understand and recognize things. All right, you know, I'm a little, I don't want to put them down, uh, and I'm not putting them down. I'm a little bit envious that why do I, why am I so much in my head that, that I can't just, uh, I can't do that. Why am I so much in my head where, um, you know, that uh, I, I'm thinking about things too much before I can even do them, or that when I'm doing them, I'm seeing things a certain way. Why can't I let go of the pain and trauma that have, that once happened to me? You know, and uh, that's probably without me dragging the video on longer because I, it's gonna take a long time to add the video stuff. Maybe I'll make a part three. Especially if you guys hit the likes, the thumbs up. I do ask if you want to show love or um, you know, uh, you know, bless me. Uh, my cash app is the same as my YouTube name, Alien Ascend. It'll be the link will be in the description. As everybody goes and subscribes and rocks with me, and I want to thank you so much.